I'm tired already and we're just getting to the call to worship. <laughs> Please stand as you are able. On your feet now, applaud God. Know this, God is God. He made us, we did not make him. We are his people, God's love and the sheep. Enter with a password, thank you. Make yourself at home, talking praise. We applaud, we laugh, we thank you, God. Let us worship God with joy. Please be seated. Yeah, hey, Doug. Yeah, Mike. That's you. Okay. Hey, <laughs> I tell you what, I know you're from the city and you haven't been out here on the farm much, but I, we've got this, this dog. You should watch this dog. This, just watch him here. We're gonna, I, I'm going to give him a whistle, and he's going to go and run from the house. He's going to herd up all the cattle, and then he's going to latch the gate with his paw. Wow. That's some dog. What's her name? Uh, what is it you call that red flower that smells good and has thorns on the stem? Oh, a rose. Oh, yeah. Hey, Rose, what is it we call that dog? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the tin? <laughs> hey, Mike. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Hey, Mike. Hey, what? Knock, knock. Who's there? I'm a. I'm a who? I'm about to announce our first song. <laughs> Please stand as you are able.
Let us pray. God of joy, we know that you have blessed us richly, yet so often we are down in the dumps over silly little disappointments. You have given us Jesus Christ and raised him from the dead and promised us eternal life, but we act like we don't know it. Forgive us, God. Keep us mindful that you always have the last laugh and that your promise is for true joy in every circumstance and life forever. Amen. Please remain standing. And now we have special guests this morning. So all the children come up and join the special guests. Are we on? Are we on? On. Okay. <gasps> Did you bring your kazoos up? <laughs> Still got more coming. That's awesome. Want to come over here so you can see better? Behind the curtain there. Everybody? All right. Well, how's everybody today? Everybody good? Good? Come on, you got to be more up to beat than that. Everybody, say it together. We're great. We're great. Come on, one more time. Amazing. That's a good one. Okay. Well, who's ever told a knock knock joke? You have, you have. What's a knock-knock joke you can think of right now? Anybody? Think of one? All right, that's okay. I have a song. I have a song about knock-knock jokes. And we're going to sing it together, okay? And the chorus goes, and we've got to lightly clap. 
Stay on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Stay on the sunny side of life. Yeehaw! Suffer no pain, it'll drive you insane. Just stay on the sunny side of life. Sing it with me. Stay on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Stay on the sunny side of life. Yeehaw! Suffer no pain, it'll drive you insane. Just stay on the sunny side of life. Knock, knock. Ether. Oh, you got to be more enthusiastic. Enthusiastic. Ether. The ether bunny. <laughs> stay on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Stay on the sunny side of life. Yeehaw! Suffer no pain, it'll drive you insane. Just stay on the sunny side of life. Knock, knock. Yeah. Better. Anna. Anna and another ether bunny. Oh. Oh, she didn't come by with the boo. Stay on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Stay on the sunny side of life. Yeehaw! Suffer no pain, it'll drive you insane. Just stay on the sunny side of life. Knock, knock. Who's there? Stella. Stella, the ether bunny. Ah. <laughs> stay on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Stay on the sunny side of life. Yeehaw! Suffer no pain, it'll drive you insane. Just stay on the sunny side of life. Knock, knock. Yet yeah, another ether bunny. Oh. <laughs> stay on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Stay on the sunny side of life. Yeehaw! Suffer no pain, it'll drive you insane. Just stay on the sunny side of life. Knock, knock. Boo. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I got ahead of myself. Cargo. Cargo. Beep and chase away all the ether bunnies. Oh. Stay on the sunny side. Always on the sunny side. Stay on the sunny side of life. Yeehaw. Suffer no pain, it'll drive you insane. Just stay on the sunny side of life. Knock, knock. Boo. Oh, don't cry. Eat the bunny to be back later on. <laughs> Yay! Stay on the sunny side. Always on the sunny side. Stay on the sunny side of life. Yeehaw! Suffer no pain. It'll drive you insane. Just stay on the sunny side of life. Knock, knock. Who's there? Orange. Orange. Orange, you're glad there aren't any song. <laughs> stay on the sunny side. Always on the sunny side. Stay on the sunny side of life. Yeehaw! Suffer no pain, it'll drive you insane. Just stay on the sunny side of life. Actually, there were some more, but I, I you know, we were gone long anyway. <laughs> You're welcome. Your daughter takes after you. She just walked away from me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Speaking of knock knock jokes, I have some friends here that would like to share some things with you today. Imagine that. But actually, this was a special request that Bert and Ernie make a special appearance today. So, oh, I dropped it. I dropped it. <clears throat> Ernie, this is Ernie. Yeah. <laughs> They're back from counseling. They know each other. <clears throat> Uh, hey, 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 buddy Bert. Hey, buddy Bert. Did you know that, that there's some knock knock jokes using characters in the Bible? Oh, no, Ernie. I did not know that, and I'm not sure I want to hear any of those. Oh, come on, Bert. Come on, it'll be fun. Can, can you boys and girls, can you help us today? Yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> okay, here we go. Bert, Bert, did you know that in the Bible, Aaron was the brother of Moses? No, Ernie, but I can believe the old brother part, because here it comes. Well, knock, knock, Bert. Knock, knock. Thank you. Aaron. Can you put some air in my bicycle tires? Can, let's say it again. <laughs> can you put some air in my bicycle tires? <laughs> Riotous laughter. <clears throat> Oh, there we go. And, and, and how about Amos? Amos, you know, he was a fearless shepherd and prophet. So, knock, knock. Come on, knock, knock. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I can't find where I'm at. Amos. Amos. 
a mosquito. <laughs> ah. Or here we go, here we go, knock, knock. <laughs> she takes after you too. Atcha. Atcha, atcha. God bless you. I don't know. <laughs> uh, let me see that one again. Knock, knock, who's there? Atcha, atcha, who? Atcha, yeah, that was it. <laughs> well, you know, kids, you sang about Anna earlier, right? The Anna eat the bunny, you sang about that? Ernie, can we just stop? No, no, we can't stop, Bert. So, you know, did you know that Anna was a female prophet in the book of Luke, in the Bible? Yep, so here we go. Knock, knock. Who's there? Anna? Anna, you, Anna, you, Anna, you, Jesus loves all of us, all of you. Oh. Ernie, does this have an ending to it? <laughs> yeah, as soon as I can find it. Yeah, buddy, Bert. <laughs> Glasses instead of contacts would have been good. <clears throat> I'm just getting started. Uh, wait a minute, Bert. I have a knock knock. Or Ernie, I have a knock knock for you. Back to counseling. I have a knock knock joke for you, Ernie. That's it, Bert. That's the spirit. Let's have it. Knock knock. Yeah. Who's there? Babylon. Babylon who? Let's get going, Ernie, before Pastor Rhonda starts babbling on and on and on. <laughs> Well, you know what? I can't top that. There isn't anything I could say following that knock-knock joke. Except that Jesus loves all of us all the time. And that's no knock-knock joke. That's no joke. Jesus loves us all. So would you pray with me? Okay? Repeat after me. Dear God, let us be thankful for humor in our lives, for laughter, for love, and for the love of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You have a knock? You, you remembered one. Go ahead, Nicholas. Who's there? The who? Oh, now, all of us say it together. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Awesome. Thank you. I might though.
Like anything can happen Can't hardly wait to see what's next I wanna face this world with wonder and excitement Fix every challenge, every tale Wherever you lead me, I'm gonna follow I'm trusting you RJ, what do you say when a skunk sprays a sheep? Pee, yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey, RJ, what did the young lamb want to be when she grew up? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, a ballerina. <laughs> How did a mess... Mexican sheep say Merry Quis Christmas. Feliz Navidad. <laughs> Where does the sheep get a haircut? The Baba shop. Where do the do sheep go on the holiday cruise? To the Bahamas. <laughs> Which car brand do, do sheep like most? A Lamborghini. <laughs> Mike, it's amazing. Every time we walk forward, they clap. Yeah, no kidding. I was afraid he was going to start standing up there in a minute, you know, <laughs> there a while ago, standing ovation. And I'll tell you what I love. I love when Bert and Ernie bring their puppet, Kevin Garris, to Children's Chat. <laughs> I just love it. Right. A funeral procession pulled into a cemetery. Several carloads of family members followed a black truck towing a boat with a coffin in it. 
A passerby remarked, that guy must have been a very avid fisherman. Oh, he is. As a matter, as a matter of fact, he's headed off to the lake as soon as we bury his wife. <laughs> Thanks for letting me have that one, Doug. <laughs> but Mike, I hear that you're going to uh, ask Jane to redo the marriage again. Yes, we are. Yes. Renew our vows. So an old fogey like you, how are you going to re remember your vows? It's pretty simple, really. Really? Yeah. A-E-I-O-U. <laughs> Sometimes Y. <laughs> at, at least Linda didn't give us a zero. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mike, knock, knock. Who's there? Rita. Rita who? Read a Bible if you want to hear the good news. Ah. And as a matter of fact, I just checked. Isaac does mean laughter, or he will laugh. He will laugh. Then I checked up Mike. Boo. <laughs> Thank you. The scripture reading today is taken from Ecclesiastes. The reading is from the King James Version. It's a uh, a uh, poor choice for biblical studies, but the poetry rarely can be beaten. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. My joke has a little beginning to it. I found this joke and I thought this would be the great time to tell this joke. So it reminded me of Howard Dickman. So many, many years ago we had this evangelism um, I don't, campaign. So where we were visiting people and I asked Howard, how do you do it? Because he visited so many people. I said, how do you do it? And he said with the little grin, you got to get your foot in the door. Okay, so this is my, uh, for Howard. The weary evangelist knocked on another door, fully expecting to have it slammed in his face. Sure enough, the older woman who answered angrily demanded that he leave once she figured out why he was there and slammed the door. The door, however, bounced back open and the woman shouted, get your foot out of my door. But ma'am, the evangelist began, when the woman again slammed the door in his face, once again, it bounced back open. I said, get your foot out of my door, the woman yelled again. One more time, she slammed the door. One more time, it bounced back open. But ma'am, the evangelist said again, only to be cut off. Don't talk back to me, the woman screamed in a rage. I want you off my property. She slammed the door a fourth time, only to see it bounce open a fourth time. Ma'am, the evangelist yelled as he started down the sidewalk, you'll be able to close your door if you move your cat out of the way. <laughs> Okay, one day there was a preacher and he got a horse and he trained his horse to, when it was time to go, he'd say, praise the Lord. And when he wanted the horse to stop, he would say, amen. So he got on his horse and said, praise the Lord. And they went around and he wanted to stop for lunch. So the preacher said, amen. Preacher got off, had his lunch. He was ready to go again. So he got on his horse and said, Praise the Lord. And they're just a going and a going. All of a sudden, they come close to a cliff. And he says, whoa. And then he said, the preacher said, oh, 
I'm sorry, I meant amen. And so the horse stopped. The preacher looked up to the heavens and said, Praise the Lord! Whoa. I'm okay! story about two little brothers who were <coughs> big troublemakers. I think their names were Dougie and Rich. <laughs> and they were always in trouble, always stealing stuff, even from the church. So one day, Pastor Rhonda and David were walking out of the church to go to lunch, and Dougie was hanging out in the parking lot, shooting hoops. So the David and Rhonda walked over, and Rhonda looked at him and said, Dougie, where is God in your life? And Dougie looked around, and well, so David leaned over, put his hands on Dougie's shoulders, and said, Dougie, where is God in your life? Well, Dougie freaked. He turned and ran. He ran home. He ran in the house. He hid in the closet. A little while later, big brother, I forget, Rich. <laughs> big brother Rich opened the closet door, and there's Dougie sitting in the corner shaking. And Rich said, Doug, dude, what are you doing? And Rich start, Dougie started to cry. He said, oh, Rich, we are in so much trouble. God is missing, and they think we stole him. <laughs> I don't have great delivery, so I'm just going to read the joke. We'll see how this goes. So a man was walking along a, walking along a California beach. He was deep in prayer when all of a sudden he said aloud, Lord, grant me one wish. The sky clouded and a booming voice said, because you have tried to be faithful. See, it's bad already. <laughs> See ya. Okay, so just like it all. Because you've tried to be faithful, I'll grant you one wish. Uh, the man said, Build a bridge to Hawaii so I can drive over any time I want to. The Lord answered, your request is very materialistic. Think of the logistics of that kind of undertaking, the supports required to reach the bottom of the Pacific, the concrete and steel it would take. I can do it, but it's hard for me to justify your desire for worldly things. Take a little more time and think of another wish, a wish you think would, would honor and glorify me. So man thought for a long time and finally he said, Lord, I wish that I could understand women. I want to know what they feel inside, what they are thinking when they give me the silent treatment, why they cry, what they mean when they say nothing, and how I can make women truly happy. So after a few minutes, God said, how many lames do you want on that bridge? <laughs> Okay, I do have a joke, but I know a few of you think my white legs are funny enough, but. <laughs> <laughs> Three boys in the schoolyard were bragging about their fathers. The first boy said, my dad scribbles a few words on a piece of paper. Then he calls it a poem. They give him $50. The second boy says, There's, that's nothing. My dad scribbles a few words on a piece of paper. He calls it a song. They give him $100. The third boy says, I got you both beat. My dad scribbles a few words on a piece of paper. He calls it a sermon, and it takes eight people to collect all the money. <laughs> <laughs> A cat dies and goes to heaven. God meets him at the gate and says, you have been a good cat all these years. Anything you desire is yours. All you have to do is ask. The cat says, well, I lived all my life with a poor family on a farm and had to sleep on hardwood floors. 
God says, no more, and instantly a fluffy pillow appears. A few days later, six mice are killed in a tra tra tragic accident, and they go to heaven. God meets them at the gate with the same offer he made the cat. The mice said, all of our lives we've had to run. Cats, dogs, and even women with brooms have chased us. If we could only have a pair of roller skates, we wouldn't have to run anymore. God says, say no more, and instantly, each mouse is fitted with a beautiful pair of tiny roller skates. About a week later, God decides to check and see how the cat is doing. The cat is sound asleep on his new pillow. God gently wakes him and asks, how are you doing? Are you happy here? The cat yawns, stretches, and says, oh, I've never been happier in my life. And those meals on wheels you've been sending over here are the best. <laughs> Hey, Mike. Yeah. You're a huge football fan, right, Buckeyes? Uh, I'm kind of speechless right now. That's not in the script, Doug. The answer is no. Mike Laird, speechless. Thank you. So um, you're this huge, what, what is it? Some team in Indiana or something, right? The Purdue Boilermakers, yes. The Purdue Boilermakers. Now, you get the tickets for free? Yes. Yes, Because absolutely. they can't sell any? That's right. That's right. It's not in the script, Doug. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, I've watched you as a fan for the Boilermakers, and, you know, that, that's awesome how much you put into being a fan of a football team. But, you know, really, you should put that same exuberance and excitement and zeal to church. Oh, I did that once. Once? Yeah, but they asked me to leave. Really? Why? Well, don't you remember, it was last, last fall, right after Purdue got done whipping the Buckeyes, 49-24, to 24 for those that don't remember. That's not in the script, Mike. And, <laughs> you know, it was, I just happened to remember that. And then I came, I, after the sermon, after Doug Williamson got done, I came up here and dumped Gatorade all over him. <laughs> you know, and, the, and, and he didn't like that, so he asked me to leave. So I can't get that excited anymore. I understand, and it's good that you can get excited one time mm -hmm. with a football game. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I think the best part of it was me introducing you as a Buckeye fan. <laughs> Thank you. You guys are having too much fun with those kazoos. I'm kind of afraid of what's going to happen next. <clears throat> All right. Well, our sermon today is kind of a take on the I'm doctor. Sorry, we interrupt the service with a special news bulletin. Pastor Rhonda, there just is not enough time for your sermon today. <laughs> sermon because it's going to be short because my husband made me promise to make it short because Cindy Huckemeyer is going to bake him some baked beans for the picnic today. Is that right, Cindy? <laughs> All right, then you get the whole load, folks. You get the whole load. Man, he's going to be really disappointed because he's been salivating over that idea of beans. All right, so the sermon today is a take on Dr. Seuss. Oh, the places you'll go. Congratulations, today is our day. We are disciples, those who follow the way. We have God as our guide. We have the Bible in hand. Our job is to spread God's love in the land. We aren't on our own. The Spirit will guide us on our discipleship journey, so don't make a fuss. 
We'll pray during the day and again in the night, asking God for guidance for the spirit to alight. We go where God calls, sometimes beyond reason, outside our comfort zones in our least favorite season. When God calls, don't worry, don't fuss, just listen to the spirit. God be with us. Oh, the places we'll go as disciples. We'll be out in the streets. We'll be doing great things. We'll serve all our neighbors, sometimes even sing. We'll keep moving forward because we have a guide. We'll work together as the Spirit takes us for a ride. Wherever we do ministry, things will go smoothly. Wherever we go, we'll fit right in the groove. Smooth groove. Sorry, I didn't get that right. Except when we don't, because sometimes we won't. Being a disciple is hard work. Sometimes we'll hit bumps and be down in the dumps and have coffee that doesn't perk and feel like a jerk. We'll all get frust flustered on our faith journey like a pretzel without salt. The point of it all, at least I would say, is don't let your journey come to a halt. You may come to a place that you don't know where to go. Some ministries seem intriguing and others seem slow. It's a place where deciding could hurt our head. Which one do we choose or do we just stay in bed? Or do we jump right in and go down on the sled? And once we choose where we fit, which way will we go, right or left, fast or slow? Maybe we'll stand out on the edge to decide if this is the right place to jump in for the ride. Or maybe we'll stand in the corner and hide. Being a disciple can make us scared. We teach and we baptize, but we don't know which pace to choose when we are deciding our space. And sometimes we run to a confusing place, for sometimes disciples doubt which way to go or we doubt someone will show or if we're able you know like the nudge to come worship in three feet of snow or we doubt that god said yes or said no or we doubt that someday our ministry will grow everyone is just doubting doubting jesus unless we see like thomas who went out for tea or someone short who climbs a tree, or doubting our sisters and brothers to share the good news with others, or doubting our call that we are, in fact, to serve all. Somehow we'll heave, the doubting will leave, we'll find our God-given gifts and talents and use them as we believe. Using our gifts for ministry, we will glorify God's name each one of us ready to spark a new flame. Oh, the places we'll go as disciples. There is food to be given, love to be shared, giving gardens to water and people who care. And the humble service that each one can give can inspire our friends and neighbors how to live. Yes, we'll grow our church family as large as it can be, large enough that some may have to watch from a tree, except when we don't, because sometimes we won't. Sometimes we will try to share the good news and hope that others will not press snooze. Ministry, whether we like it or not, is not always easy and may not reach a lot. When we try to make disciples, there is a chance that some things will happen. Then we'll all dance. There may also be times that our work seems to fail, but don't lose hope. God carries us down the trail. We will continue to try with the Spirit as our guide. We will try and try again in the midst of our pride to do ministry for our Lord and Savior, although even we may not understand our counter-cultural behavior. We will continue to follow Christ's example and work through hard times, find solutions that are ample, Along the journey, we will be tempted for sure, so when we go, be sure to pray. Pray for guidance and care. Remember to share the good news. God is there. 
And will we succeed? Yes, we will indeed. With God's help, guaranteed, disciples, we will do ministry. So no matter our talent or the size of our gift, we can help others and God's name we can lift. We are disciples. Today is our day to enact God's love in a Christ-like way. So let's get on with it. What do you say? Amen. Am I getting booze? <laughs> okay. What's next? Oh. Oh, yeah. Joy break. Where's the joy break? Oh, no, we're doing a song. When we are tempted uh, to the tune of O Little Town of Bethlehem. So let's stand and look at the screen and sing again. Well, we're all the way back here in the cubbies because I was getting tired of seeing people's faces when we tried to tell jokes. And I'm pretty sure this is the last time we'll have microphones in our hands. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, a man was circling the block, searching for a parking spot. Finally, after the third time around, he prays, God, if you help me find a parking spot, I will go to church every Sunday and tithe 10% of my income. Immediately, a spot opens up and the man prays, never mind, I found one. <laughs> hey Mike, knock knock. Who's there? Let us. Let us who? Let us pray. All right, let's pray. Oh God, amid the laughter and celebration of this day, it's good that we pause and remember that many carry burdens that need not be carried alone. God of grace, God of love and laughter, we thank you that we are so wondrously created and that we are made for relationship with you and with one another. And we thank you for laughter with friends and loved ones. We thank you for the laughter of children and the song it creates in our hearts. By your great unending love, you inspire in us a spirit of imagination and creativity Help us to use that spirit to play more, to laugh more, to create beauty in every way possible. Remind us to laugh out loud, for doing so will heal some of the wounds within us. Not all, but some. God, we pray for those who cannot find their laughter today, for those who are grieving or suffering illness of body, mind, or spirit, for those who are lonely and in need of someone to share their time and friendship. May these and the troubles of all your people be soothed, blessed, and comforted by your holy presence. May we each find the laughter within us that sets our spirits free. And in that freedom, may we take your love into every part of our lives. 
These and all the prayers of our hearts we offer now in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> Doug, you here? Okay. All right. You know, there was a little child in here in the church for the first time watched as the ushers passed the offering plates. So when they neared the pew where the little child sat, the youngster piped up and said that everyone, loud enough so that everyone could hear, said, don't pay for me, Daddy, I'm under five. <laughs> a little girl became restless as the preacher's sermon dragged on and on. Finally, she leaned over to her mother and whispered, Mommy? If we give her the money now, will she let us go? <laughs> One Sunday, uh, Rhonda told her congregation, this was back several years ago uh, at one of her other congregations, that the church needed some extra money and asked the people to prayerfully consider giving a little extra in the offering plate. You know, she told them that whoever gave the most would be able to pick out three hymns. That's a big deal. Might take, take out Epicus history, Doug. After the offering plates were passed, the pastor glanced down and noticed that someone had placed a thousand dollar bill in the offering. Rhonda was so excited that she immediately shared this joy with her congregation and said she'd like to personally thank the person who placed that thousand dollar bill in the plate. And there said, Rosie all the way to the back and she shyly raised her hand Rhonda asked her to come come to the front. So slowly she made her way up to Rhonda She told her how wonderful it was that she gave so much and in Thanksgiving Asked her to pick out three hymns because that was her promise, right? It was yeah, so, so her eyes brightened as she looked over the congregation, congregation and pointed to the three most handsome men in the building and said, I'll take him, him, and him. <laughs> Your tithes and offerings will now be received. There is a special gift for everyone in the offering plate. Today, not only do you get to put something in, but also take something out. Mike, you've been taking stuff out of the offering plate for years. Yeah, they never have enough change. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Philip. Philip who? Fill up the plate as it's passed to you.
Thank you, God, for the joy you have given us, which bubbles over into laughter and fun. Thank you for renewing our joy. <clears throat> we pray that you will use these gifts, our gifts, to bring joy to all the world. We pray in the name of the risen Lord, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing our final hymn, the words on the screen, the tune is Go Tell It on the Mountain. Hey, Rhonda, we need to get serious for one second here. So uh, thank you for bringing in a, a breath of fresh air, doing things a little bit differently, maybe a little unorthodox, but what a lot of fun that uh, we had today. And, and Mike, you know, who, somebody who really would have enjoyed this service, with the exception of how long it took, was the true funny guy of St. Paul's UCC, Jim May. And, and Mike, maybe you could tell a Jim May story. Well, I'm sure that uh, the May family have heard Jim's jokes for a long, long time, but this is one of my favorites that he told. So God had just created Adam. I wish I, wish I could tell as good as Jim could, but I'll try. Anyway, God had just created Adam. Okay, and they were having a discussion about a companion. And Adam says, well, you know what? I would really like to have someone that, that would love me, obey me, do everything that I ask, do the cooking, do the cleaning, do all these kind of things. And God says, Adam, that's going to cost you an arm and a leg. <laughs> and Adam said, so what can I get for a rib? <laughs> Yes, typically Holy, Holy Humor Sunday is held on the Sunday following Easter because God has the last laugh over the devil. Jesus was resurrected. And so when I found out we were doing a church picnic, I thought it would be fun to do a Holy Humor Sunday earlier than the Sunday after Easter. So that's why we did this today. And thank you so much for all your participation and especially the folks that were in it today. I'm not gonna thank everybody, but you know that little juggler is Corey, Cody, Cody Burt, and he was awesome. So let's give him a round of applause. Because 
I know he was practicing. All right, so remain standing as we do the benediction. Lord, grant me a joyful heart and a holy sense of humor. Please give me the gift of faith to be renewed and shared with others each day. Teach me to live this moment only, looking neither to the past with regret nor to the future with apprehension. Let love be my guide and my life of prayer. Go in laughter, go in grace, keep the Lord in your heart and a smile on your face. And thank you, Lucy and, and her company of people there that help provide the sound effects. I'll see you at the picnic. Thank you. Thank you.